Hello, praise the Lord. I'm your servant, Pastor Victor E. Harris. Good to have you here with us today. Um, I know that all year has been a whole lot of chaotic things going on with the coronavirus, with riots in the street, with the presidential election. A lot of things are happening, uh, but we're thankful that the Lord has kept us all and you're here and that we're having the great privilege and opportunity every day to give God praise and glory. And this is our introduction. Um, you'll see us doing these uh, teaching sessions uh, throughout the rest of the year. We had desired to get uh, back to you sooner than this. Uh, unfortunately, we had a lot of events happening um, and we had some difficulty with our cameras and we're actually trying to pursue getting better quality cameras and things like that. So keep us in your prayer. Um, we're going to be talking about faith in this series. That's going to be the dominating factor, the definition of faith according to biblical principles. There's a lot of teachings on faith. This will not be the norm. I suspect um, on the teachings of faith, we're going to be walking through the scriptures and what the true meaning of faith is. Um, it is not the essence of our message, but it is the uh, highlight as to where we're trying to go in the teaching in respect to Christ and him crucified. I won't get into the politics of things and the national crises that we're dealing with, but I want us to keep uh, Donald Trump and his wife, Melania Trump, in mind and keep them in prayer. And also to pray for our soldiers overseas and those who are working in law enforcement to keep those people who are first responders also in prayer and also keep our pastors all over the globe and those who are in underground churches in China, uh, Iran, Iraq. There's a lot of things we have to pray for, for the sick and the shut in. And by faith, we want to trust the Lord to protect everyone who uh, are really trying to bring good into their communities and into this nation. Uh, if you will, do not uh, allow these things to paralyze you with fear and worry, but to be comforted and have courage to trust God for your future, for your children, for your family. And uh, we thank you for listening. God bless you. We'll see you on the other side. What brings you out here today? We're here to fight for our country because it's 1776 in America again. And we have to honor the heritage of our country that there were always people that paid the price so others can be free. So the Patriots Awards, we got to stand up. We can't be discouraged by the Supreme Court ruling. It's not over yet. We're going to fight all the way to the end until there's victory. And Donald J. Trump is inaugurated for his second term. And when he gets in the second term, the swamp is in trouble and they know it. We have to fight for freedom. There's a reason why people's blood's all over the ground, all over. We, we talk about it. We mention it. We talk. We show it to our kids and we teach it in schools because it mattered. Well, I'm a pastor. So from a spiritual perspective, I believe the media, they're the modern day prophets of Baal, which means everything that's spewed out of them is a lie. So I listen to the Holy Spirit and I listen to all of the great patriots that are speaking truth. What would you tell Americans who might be losing heart? Uh, don't give up. There was an executive order passed in 2018. I don't think we've even seen the, be the beginning of this yet. So just stay, stay the course. Uh, don't lose heart. Yeah, hang in there and pray. We almost lost the battle against the British, right? And our soldiers, without any arms, without any clothes, in the snow, bare feet, they were hurting, they were injured, they were, you know, field bandages, and they continued and continued and continued till they won. Liberty is, is, is not the natural state of, of the human condition. And so we want to preserve the liberty that we have and just make sure that it is a, it's truly a free election and, and transparent because I believe this is a spiritual battle. There's going to be debates. Did Trump win? Did Biden win? It doesn't matter because God wins. Right on, right on. Lastly, if you haven't already, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like this type of honest news content delivered directly to your YouTube feed. And by the way, if you've already subscribed, just double check to make sure that you're still subscribed. YouTube seems to be getting cute with uh, unsubscribing our fans unwittingly. And also you can follow us on Parler, Instagram, and sign up for our email newsletter. That way, if anything ever happens here on this channel, we can always stay in touch. And until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed and stay free. I give myself away. I 
give myself away so you can use me I give myself away hello good evening or good morning whatever time you're catching this vic uh, video I'm your servant pastor Victor E Harris good to be here with you today we're going to get ready to start in our, our in our study our Bible study on the series Jesus Christ is the perception of God. Um, as I said in the introduction, I know we've uh, not been able to come to you on YouTube and other stations. Um, we're actually going to be on Rumble, uh, started by Dan Van Gino. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And also we're going to be on, uh, uh, what's the name of it? Uh -huh. Parlor, parlor, yes, right. And a, and a few other engines. That's our engineer, Jared, um, the one who works on our videos and everything. Um, <clears throat> it's good to have you here today. Um, we're going to also try to get into our studies and we're going to break them up by segments uh, anywhere between 20 to 25 minutes long. Um, wherever we are, we'll cut off and we'll come back. Uh, you see us having the same attire as we've said uh, previously. Um, these are pre-recorded messages. So, no, I didn't go to sleep with this and wake up with it all. So, <laughs> but thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button uh, to join our Cross Covenant family here in Jackson, Mississippi. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, this is actually a t teaching on the faith uh, in respect to uh, scriptural principles or biblical principles. So we're gonna try our best and pray that the Lord will lead us and guide us for uh, clarity and to be able to explain it and articulate it where it can be understood uh, simply, you know, very simple. So if you will, first of all, we're gonna start um, in Romans, chapter 10 and we're going to read the 16 to the 17 verses to the 17 verse it's a very familiar passage of scripture um, then we'll we'll pray and as I've already given you our subject we're kind of re going to be rebooting this plane flying over um close to an airport around here, so you might hear a lot of that. I hope you can hear us fine. Give us an OK button if you can hear hear us. We'll go check the uh, comment session, make sure that these the sound is coming through. We're trying to get uh, better equipment so we can have uh, better quality sound and, and, and video. But we're going to read that, and then we're going to pray, and we're going to come back and deal with some other scriptures. So let us begin. Romans chapter 10, again, starting at the 16th to the 17th verse. It says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the great privilege and the great opportunity to come before your throne to seek your face, to seek the leading and the guidance of your mighty hand. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you bestowed upon us through your beloved son who shed his blood 2,000 years ago who died that we might live, who rose that we might rise in newness of life, and who was buried that our sins may be buried away, to be buried and taken away. In this respect, Father, we ask that you help us in these teachings on the spirit and the essence of faith, that it may be edifying to the body of Christ, that it may bring glory unto your name, to whom you sent the spirit of truth who would guide us into all truth, who shall not speak of himself, but glorify the one who came in the likeness of sinful men. Our Lord, Father, we ask that you bind the works of the enemy in Jesus' name. 
buying every distraction, every plot and conspiracy of dark forces that try to hinder your people and protect us with the hedge of protection and provide for us the clarity of mind that we might shine as children of light that those who are sitting in darkness may see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and come to you, the creator of all things. And this we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. <clears throat> There's a lot to unpack here. Um, I've read just a moment ago out of Romans chapter 10, 16 verse, as you well know. Um, there's a lot even before that statement. I want to just for a moment to go with us for a moment to the same chapter, Romans chapter 10. And we're going to look at the eight verse um, real quickly, if you will. But who does it say the word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart? This is the word of faith, which we preach. And of course, you know, there's the whole denominations that are uh, under the title of the word of faith. And I'm not here at this moment in this juncture, in this juncture to actually talk about different doctrines or different belief system. Of course, that's going to uh, definitely enter into the subject. But this is another reason why we're dealing with this. Even though the title of this uh, study, it is, again, Jesus is the perception of God. Uh, you are understand by and by as to why that title is chosen specifically in discussing the word of faith. But I want you to notice something. It says, and in your heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach. So the word of faith is a definite article. It should, as you can see, it says the word of the faith. That's how it should be uh, uh, written out, translated, if you will, or interpreted. The word, the faith, meaning there's only one word, true word. Uh, in the Greek is uh, logos, message, means message. Uh, the faith. There's only one kind of the faith. Let's, for a moment, let's look at something. If you will, go to 1 Corinthians with us and let's turn the page go to 1st Corinthians uh, chapter 1 remember we said Jesus is the perception of God we're talking about the faith I'm going to be very, very repetitious in this respect but it's all uh, for a, a, a purpose a purpose that is very important to the body of Christ. Uh, there's a lot of teachings um, on faith and there's a lot of different directions that people approach it, uh, faith. But we're talking about the faith. What is it? Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 10th verse, I had to get my glasses out because my eyes are not, not as uh, good as they used to be. Let's look at the ninth verse. And also, we're just going to read the 10th verse. And then we're going to skip over to the 17th verse and the 18th verse. There's a lot here to unpack. And we'll keep uh, breaking this down as we go. It's not complicated. It just needs to be clarified. Okay. God is faithful. And this was a favorite expression of the integrity of God amongst the Jews. God is faithful in whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the faithfulness of God is um, directly connected to us understanding that we're called unto the fellowship of his son. 
Jesus Christ. The call here refers to predestined, but of a plan. And the note says not of a person. And it's positive study note. Now, I don't entirely agree with that. I believe it's both to, the, it first has to be to the person before we could actually be connected to the plan. So it's sort of the other way around. It's not to the plan and not the person, it's to the person in order for the plan to be revealed. But we're not here to split hairs. I just want to highlight that for a moment. We'll explain that and with scriptural evidence of that. It says in the 10th verse, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, I, I, I would like to say this. I thank the Lord for Jimmy Swagger uh, ministry. I thank the Lord for Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is the only true gospel if it's in the right context. And uh, unfortunately, Sometimes we get lost in the idea of the cross as it reflection as it re, uh, refers to um, our faith. Frankly, this is why we're going to be dealing with this subject, and, and it, it can be very subtle and it's very sophisticated in its effort to convey a truth. But at the same time, it gets lost because we're looking at an object. One of the greatest sin of Israel and of all humanity is idolatry. If you go back to Genesis, which we will do probably not in this segment, the first arsenal of deception that was labeled or leveled at Adam and Eve was to remove their perception as far as trusting the Lord or trusting God and his word, which is his perception, which is God's point of view, the divine point of view, to removing it to the object, which was the tree of knowledge and good and evil. As you will recall, we want to try to get into the weeds on this. Um, the serpent, which was the first false prophet, if you will, he was used by Satan. He wasn't Satan. He was used by Satan. And what he did was to maneuver Eve, in which we see that Eve was deceived, Adam wasn't. He disobeyed, meaning that Adam knew better, but it, his heart wasn't in true allegiance to, to, to the Lord or to divine perception, which is strange considering Adam was the first man he was wrapped in glory he saw God face to face God was his pastor if you will if you allow us to say that and Eve was deceived but the deception was the same for both of them there the, the attack was different because the deception starts inwardly so they was guilty of that same crime, if you will, inward deception. But the attack was leveled at Eve to maneuver her from trusting in God's point of view to an object. In this case, it was the tree of knowledge and good and evil, which was forbidden uh, fruit, if you will. Mind you, and this is something you have to think about, and the Lord has showed this to me. The tree of knowledge and good and evil in and of itself was not evil. It did not, it did not call, cause evil to enter into the world. It was a symbol of love. How, what do you mean when, when I say that? It was a symbol of love because love gave them free will, a choice. So the knowledge of the tree of life and the knowledge of good and evil was the doctrine of choice that was given to Adam and Eve, even in the beginning. And let that settle in on you. The doctrine of choice. This addresses so many different things. 
And so God is faithful. That's what that sentiment or that admonishment or that favorite expression uh, should mean to us or should be taught. God is faithful because he allows us as a creatures to choose, which is the great expression of love. And that fellowship that was synonymous to them accepting his word, what he said, thou shalt eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of knowledge and good and eat, thou shalt not eat thereof. We're going to go back to that uh, soon enough for probably the third session, session, breaking it down. And that's important because in the 10th verse of chapter one of Corinthians, the Holy Spirit moves on to Paul to say, now I beseech you, brother, that word beseech means beg you. So even in that statement, as the Holy Spirit moves upon Paul, inspires him to speak these words, to write these words, you can see engrafted in the wording is the doctrine of choice because he uses the word beseech. So the concept is not has not changed even in the beginning as the beginning making Adam and Eve. <clears throat> Brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you speak the same thing. And so he, he, he beckons or summons the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus means Savior. Lord, Savior, Anointed One, in that order. Lord, meaning you are in alignment with Him as the ruler and governor of your life, your will, your perception. You, you, uh, you and I purposely render our will our minds, our soul to him, thus making him Lord. That's why the word beseech is in front of it. Lord, what kind of Lord is he? He's a savior. And we won't try to get into it, but he's Christ, the anointed one, that you speak the same thing. Now, with this being said, speak the same things and there'd be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. This is the reason why we have to deal with faith, the faith, because the consequences of not knowing the Lord's point of view or embracing wholeheartedly and aligning ourselves with the Lord's point of view, with divine point of view, there will be division. It is impossible to speak the same thing and it is impossible to not have division and it is impossible to have the same mind and same judgment if we're all operating on our own opinion, our own interpretations or hand-me-down doctrines from the traditions and the doctrines of men. As in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve received the same mind, the same judgment, meaning that they had the mind of God, the judgment of God handed to them. But division the crept in when they approached their life based on how they thought or what their preferences were. And they were easy targets for deception and for false preaching and for an object of faith. All right, object of faith, see? First Corinthians chapter 10, skipping over to the 17th verse. And we're gonna 17 to 18 verse and then we're gonna go back to the Romans chapter 10. But it says, for Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel, not with wisdoms of words, not with wisdom of words, the gospel is not based on intellectualism. And now this is important because we do need intellect. But it's not a, the gospel is not healed by intellectual strength or weakness 
It is simply uh, God's or the Lord's, or if we will, the best way I think I can frame this is divine point of view, meaning God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is divine point of view, which is pure, perfect. Some people don't like us to use that word point of view or perception, which it, 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 it really tells us there's an intellectual weakness to not understand that God has a point of view. And his point of view is not in category, is not in the category of ours. Ours is opinionated, subject to uh, change, subject to the whims and the uh, fluidity of circumstances. That is not to be compared to the, to the divine point of view, which never changed, doesn't have to change because he's all knowing. So it's important to know that. Uh, and we'll get more into it as we go. So this gospel that we preach is not based on the intellectual or the intellect of mankind. It really is based on the intellect of the divine. So intellect is not dismissed. It just needs to be in a line or in harmony with God's judgment. Well, he goes on to say, not with wisdom or words, least the cross of Christ should be made non effect. Now, here's where we get uh, sometimes twisted. When Paul uses the word cross, the cross is only mentioned, if memory serves me correctly, you can look it up and I double check, but I think it's only mentioned 23 times in the entirety of the Bible. Now, it's in shadows, it is in types in the Old Testament, but the literal word is mentioned only 23 times. If Paul is not promoting, I've come to understand that the word of God has a lot of symbols and types and frankly, point of references. And we're going to deal with that word point of reference. But a lot of people would take that the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified or are taught as I have taught this myself. And this is what causes somewhat of division and the church community uh, when we have our own point of view engrafted in to what the word of God says. We add to it. And that's what Eve did. She, we'll talk about that. I, I keep referencing that because it's very important. We see in Genesis the DNA or the beginning of false doctrine or inward deception. That's why that's important. And this is another example of this. Paul used the word cross, if you will, as a signpost of the greatest event known in creation, yet alone in human history. A signpost. It's just, I'm a truck driver. I do that uh, as a living, and so do my wife, a few others that I know. And when I'm getting directions, or I'm going by the uh, GPS or uh, using a the map, um, there are things that are necessary for me to get to where I'm going to arrive at my destination. And oftentimes what is used is signposts. And matter of fact, you can't really go down a highway without signs, signposts. You know, this is Highway 59. This is, uh, you just entered into Missouri or whatever. You have all these different signs or you're entering into a construction zone. So give that a thought. So you have all these different signposts. Give it a real good thought. Necessary to get to the right destination. But you don't stop at the signpost and declare that as your destination. 18 verse for the preaching or the word or the logos or the message of the cross is to them who perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I taught this myself and I won't name names at this moment, but many are telling people based on scriptures like this about putting your faith in the cross. 
Then we have the Word of Faith Church, who says that faith is about receiving from God blessings. You know, we're kingdom kids, naming and claiming. So you got all these different diverse doctrines around faith. Think about it. And I am here to put on the table, table, and if you will, to be a critical analyst to say, where is it we find in the scripture where our faith is meant to be in a object? If you're going to use the word object, the only object that I can find is Christ himself. Technically, it's not an object. He is the author, as the scripture says, and the finisher of our faith. Now, when Paul says, for the logos of the, cross, uh, of the cross, we have to dissect this. This is important. The message of the cross. <laughs> it's kind of funny because we, 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 we talk about not going after the gospel with our intellect, but then we intellectualize this without seeing the true nature of what's being said. He's not saying that the cross itself is the message. He said there's a message of the cross. It seems like a wordplay in the sense it is, but it's not necessarily uh, meant to misdirect us to think that our faith is in the cross rather than our faith should be in the message that the cross is a signpost of. Okay, what do I mean? Let's go back to first, I mean, go back to Romans uh, that we originally started from. Romans chapter 10. Um, we're we're going to have to shut, close out. How many minutes do I have left? Three minutes. Okay, um, I'm uh, have to come back in the next segment. Um, and this is designed to be, as I said earlier, it, it is a Bible study. Uh, we're going to come back to Romans chapter 10 after this um, segment. We're going to pray and come back. Uh, again, this is, we're going to label this uh, part one. Excuse me, part one of, of Jesus Christ is the perception or Jesus is the perception of God. And again, we're going to do this little bit by little bit because it really is a very major subject um, considering that we're challenging the listener and the student of the Bible to actually go back and reevaluate what you've been taught in your local churches and how is it being conveyed? And what I'm going to try to do is to make full proof of my ministry that the Lord has given me to make sure that one of the other thing, one of the underlying uh, issues in the church is that we're not actually uh, how do I say this? Centering ourselves up on the person and the character of the one that we worship, that we uh, believe came and died for our sins. And we're going to deal with that in very deep details as to why the faith must be defined in a proper way so that we won't get thrown off by all of these subtle or even sophisticated uh, doctrines that are handed to us. Uh, and I believe this is the key to revival, the key to reformation. But thank you for joining us. Again, we're going to start back in the next segment in Romans chapter 10. We're going to go back to the 16th verse. We've got a lot of other uh, biblical terrains to cover. If you will bow your head with, with me for a moment, and we'll pray and we'll come back to the next segment. segment. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the great opportunity and privilege to come before your people. We ask that you help us to rightly divide this word of truth and to have clarity. We thank you for your love, for your, your kindness and your everlasting mercy. 
and bless your people, Lord, those who are sick and, and those who are uh, brokenhearted and those who ears must be unstopped and who eyes must be open to the gospel and the shining light of your truth. And we pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you next segment. Joy is where you are. And love is who you are.